special books held mm -hmm. on the side while we're moving in a new stove. Go ahead, Mom, what's that first book? I Looked Over Jordan is by Ernie Brill. He worked at Kaiser. We were co-workers for years. And then he moved away, but before he moved away, he wrote a book, and the characters are based on our co-workers at Kaiser. And um, I, I am mentioned as one of the people, you know, that in the front page of the book, so i got to keep it for that. And I asked you when the stove guy comes to hide the Hitler book, just in case they we are offended. This book, so I want to hear what that this is. This book is 1933. You know how they say nobody knew anything? This book is called The Hitler Terror. I've had it many, many years, and the burning of the Reichstag, and which they blamed on some communist guy. But it's prepared by the World Committee for the Victims of German Fascism. And so that's why it's a, it's, it's a document of uh, what Hitler took hmm. here. A swastika is cut into the hair of a Jew. Here, this picture, you see? Oh. People who buy in Jewish stores denounced as traitors. This is 1933. The, he started this then, as soon as he got power. So this book How did shows, he get into power, Mom? I know that's going Well, you history, know, it was uh, it's a little complicated, but they had a parliamentary season. Uh, season. They had a parliamentary thing like they have in England, and so uh, the uh, fascist party uh, got a majority, and then he became chancellor, but from there he became a dictator, so he didn't waste any time just taking everything over. Uh, let, here, boycott of a store. Let the hands of the Jewish pig rot away. You see, it was known what Hitler was doing, but there were people who just said they never knew. Hmm. Hmm. No. But anyway, that's what this book is. It's Tell me proof. the Lewis Carroll one over here, because oh. I stopped and like, just in Oh, well, you know, oh, Lewis amazing. Carroll, of course, is one of my favorite writers. I don't think very many people have you seen start, Alice. You He was also, well, this is not the Alice. This is his but isn't that the photography. Girl? That's a different one. Oh, that's I don't know if Alice is in Look here. Look at the girl on the front. It looks like she's the one that Alice would have been mm, made after. I can show you See? Alice. Doesn't that look like Alice? It could be, but it's a side view, and it's hard to tell. I'll okay. show you Alice, because I have Alice. Um, he, photography was a new art, and he got very involved in it, and he was known as a great photographer. What's the years of uh, Lewis Carroll's life? Oh, you, you how, want me how, to just recite that? I can't. How old did he, um, I mean, how old was he when he started doing the photography? Well, this books? book came out in 1949, but how old was when he, was when he started photography? Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell you offhand. You'll have to look that up. But um, this uh, book uh, was kind of pricey, but worth every penny because it's got all these plates. There he is, a lovely man, and uh, he did. A lo he loved okay. children. Yeah. Three girls, <laughs> and uh, who's is that? Him in the top? Uh, it's a friend of the Dodgson. You know, his real name was Dodgson. That's Mr. Ben. That's a nice pose. Uh. Well, there, that must be it. Oh, yeah. Alice Murdoch. Oh, sweet. Uh, six of Lewis Carroll's sisters and his brother, Edwin. Hold on. Wow, he had but a he was, family. But he, he was early on to photography, when photography, and don't ask me the year, because I cannot remember Look everything. Look at her, she looks like Alice that, Murdoch. Well, he dressed, he dressed Look, them up. Right right yeah. Now. That he dressed them up in costumes often to, to take, take the photo oh. to take the photos. He was Look at oh, her. Beatrice Henley, daughter of the vicar at Putney. You know, Look at oh that Alice Jane Duncan posing for the elopement. <laughs> wow. She's gonna go out that window. <laughs> yes, these are just wonderful. Look at him. Son of Tom Taylor, Tom Taylor, editor of Punch. Punch is the funny magazine that the British What did he do? Have out. everybody sign the... Well, I don't know. That's yeah, I guess that of... signed, yeah. 1863, if you mm. want to know a date. Well, that's a real... Um, <laughs> yeah, Good so enough. these are... Just, oh, he's cute. Alphonse Legro, Slade Professor at London University. Mm. Christina Rossetti, very famous name, and her mother, and so on. So we have a lot of wonderful pictures that very oh, few people sweet. have seen which beautiful look at this that's beautiful no yeah he was a very accomplished photographer and so then and photographer oh. wasn't that easy in those days not like now you just 
but punch a button. No, it wasn't <laughs> easy, and those are amazing. And then he yeah. I think he oh. developed his own stuff. Yes, he did it himself. Is that stuff. the little hand, probably the little <laughs> handwriting of the kid? Oh, maybe. How that's, cute. That's in the. Uh huh. Uh, niece of Mrs. Longley. Mm -hmm. I think she was an actress. Look how cute that is. Mm -hmm. The little pose up the top. See, I've got some really great things here. Yes, you do. Before so, we go and look at the pile in the living room, because we have to move stuff around. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh, sweet. Oh, well, look at her. Oh. Katie Brown. Alexander. A Chinaman. Oh. And here's a, a Turk. <laughs> Ethel Hatch as a Turk. <laughs> Out of just off the top in these books, besides your checkoff, what's that red one right next to the checkoff? Well, this is somebody I discovered some years back. His name is Maurice Baring. Oh. These are his poems. But every time I go to my antiquarian bookseller, if he's got a Maurice Baring, I buy it. Read me one poem. Oh no. No. Well, because you know. just one. Well, if we're funny. here now. We may not come back to this pile. Well. This only well, pick, I don't know. Pick a I don't poem know what. Okay, poem. I don't know. Let's see, let's see. Farewell. This is the first, the worst farewell. Goodbye to the long dream. I hear the tolling of my boyhood's knell, and I must cross the stream. Goodbye, South Meadow, Athens, Cuckoo Weir. Goodbye, tall Brocas trees. To me, you are more sacred and more fair than the Hesperides. Goodbye, dear library, dear musty shelves. Worn books and marble bust, where over tables scholars skipped like elves and raised a cloud of dust. And there I saw, as through a misty veil, a chalice of white fire, the light of Shelley's song, and heard the tale of his divine desire. Twas there I read how, led by fatal chance, a mortal loved the moon, and thus I learned the language of romance and heard the magic tune. There's more, but that's a good sample. That's beautiful. I have many of his books, and he's just brilliant, especially his essays. And uh, yeah, he's long gone now. And but what happened is, he, you know, in those days, to be a diplomat, not like in the United States today, you had to know three modern languages and two ancient ones. Two ancient ones. Yes, Holy cow. like Greek and you know. Yeah. What's the other one? Latin. Hmm. But anyway, so but he went to Russia as a diplomat and fell in love with Russia, and that's his his that was his great love, and so he wrote about it, and it was still during the czar, days of the Tsar, but he did go back in 1921 again, but uh, he just fell in love with the whole culture and, and everything, and so that's how I got started getting interested in him because I love the Russian culture too. Mm -hmm. Which ones are you reading right now? You got a little stack oh, here, brother. We can put that away after, Mom. Okay. Well, I'm reading the plays of Beaumarchais that the Marriage of Figaro and Barbara Seville operas are based on. I am reading that because I'm going to go see somebody put it together for the Berkeley Rep Theater. This I started, but I have to get back to. It's a new book, The Russian Debutante's Handbook by Gary Steingart. It's a new uh, book. Yeah, it's a couple of years old. Russian journal, Lewis Carroll. You know, oh. our lovely Lewis Carroll visited Russia. I don't know why I have it out here exactly. <laughs> but uh, my friend Simon Karlinsky wrote this book on Russian drama. Yes, and, and your it's friend. inscribed. But uh, I started, I, I have started it. I have started with fondness and gratitude. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. so, and this I just recently got at my favorite booksellers. And what it is, is Sketches of the 60s by Bret Hart and Mark Twain. Oh, wow. They work for the Californian paper in San Francisco from 1864 to 1867. It's funny when you say Sketches of the 60s, but it's the 1860s. Yes, yes. And there's the Californian uh, copy of it. And uh, so, you know, I've read a few of these, but I haven't gotten all through it. Sketches... And in this word, is for our in newspaper. Word, yeah. sketches, not yeah. drawings. Yeah, so. this is uh, Steamer Day in San Francisco, 1866, as pictured by Edward Jump. Mm -hmm. So these are fun to read. <laughs> That's right. Twain was here in San Francisco freezing in the yes. summer. Oh, I loved it. 
She has a lot of great ones over here. But the funny part is we're cleaning out the hall so we can move a stove in, and you just have to see the pile that Jenna and her boyfriend Ben stacked in there. It's hysterical. This is Jenna's art we found as we were cleaning when she was... And there's our little kitty John in the picture by the window. We have millions of pictures of John. Yep. Okay, I'm going to tilt up on this insane stack, but everything is incredible in there. I even have one of my little plays, which I can't get rid of all my plays from New York. What is this one that's wrapped up in the plastic, Mom? Oh, it's just uh, something I found in a second-hand store. Some is when Fyodor Shalyapin, the great Russian bass, uh, it's a program that he sang from. Oh. And what year? I don't know. 1899, I guess. This I, book on top, the uh, Shelley art, is, as I've said. Sheila. Before. Sheila. I'm sorry, I can't even say well, Sheila. <laughs> see, because we have, we have a, well, you can't see the reflections bad, but up on the wall of Sheila. Want to open that for me, honey? Sure. And there's Pushkin upside down. Pushkin upside mm. down. <laughs> It's very sad because the art movement it, it, pre World War One was so incredible and exciting. And uh, Sheila and his wife died in the 1918 flu. He was still very young. Um, two of my other favorites from that year, uh, from wow, those okay. years, Franz Mark died in the war, World War One. That's stupid war. Did that mean he was fighting in the yeah, war? Yeah. Yeah. The only one that didn't croak was uh, Kandinsky. He survived somehow. Mm. Is, that, is that him? Portrait of a bachelor. <laughs> Wonder why. I don't know. He looks so intense. I don't know. Yeah, mm. But, uh, yeah, mostly he drew women. Egon Sheila, that, that must be a self. Oh, no, it says portrait of Franz Martin Harbitz, somebody or other, these German names. But certainly brilliant. And that uh, brings me to the Blue Rider, which is one of my favorite uh, art movements. That book's right down, right somewhere. there. The fin. Oh, that's not. The oh, Blue that's Rider. fine, girl. Oh God, he's. Famous. There's the Blue Rider. Yeah, there. That's a children's version of the Blue Rider. Hmm. And that's a yellow cow sees the world in blue. <laughs> uh, Adventures in art. So it's Kandinsky and Franz Mark. Oh, yeah, it's wonderful art, I think. But Franz to, Mark died in the war. When Jasmine and Hannah come over, we have mm. to pull out books to show them. <laughs> we need a shelf just for a special art shelf. Yeah, we have... Uh, yeah, that's the one. We had a, a lot of animals. Yeah, we, I had a, used to have a pin. I don't know what happened to it. You had, oh, yeah, you had that, and you had a night light that was that. That's, your I like that. Oh, August from, Mack, he's, and he's another one who died in the war. Look, it's so lovely. Now, tell me about your dad that was made hats. My look father a, went to the Art like. Students League, and mm -hmm. during the war, he, uh, during the Roosevelt, he worked as an artist with the Wor Works Progress Act, WPA. But he made hats by hand, and, you know. So, anyway, that's a nice, uh, I like that. Well, we have a lot of cleaning to do, so what's that one with the eyeball there? What? Oh, this that's a... Huh. Stein... Oh, these guys, a Russian avant-garde. I guess there was an exhibit at the Modern Art New York, so that must be where I got this. Mm -hmm. But mm. Um, early Soviet, that's <coughs> before culture. they clamped down on uh, avant-garde art, before Stalin... I like Put a lot of the, it. oh. Three Penny Opera, set design for the Three Penny Opera. Wow. Moscow I love, look at that, look at Chamber that the Theater. On, yeah. Oh no, What's the Steinberg brothers, Stenberg or whatever they are, brothers, oof. They're fantastic. I think so. Yeah. So I got to see this. How big do you think these, how big were they on, on the wall? Well, I don't know, maybe like that. Because I was surprised to see it's how big to... some Monet's are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it tells you, but you have to know what centimeters mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an American. I don't know from centimeters. <laughs> I can't mm. uh, figure that. Ah! Oblomic. 
Mm. Awesome. So, Did yeah. I just say awesome? Awesome. <laughs> Love Look that. at the stairs. Mm hmm Is that... I wonder if that's the 39 stairs. <laughs> no, the 39 steps. Steps. Offset lithograph. And how did they create these? Talking about photography, these couldn't have been so easy to to make. It's not like graphic art and a computer. Yeah, I, you print I, it I don't know how. I don't know, but beautiful. Um, cool. Very, very. Do you have an old copy of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof up there? I do. That was. You think that oh, was my play? That was your really? copy of something. Hmm. Well, of course, well, I tell saw me it on quickly. Broadway with Paul Newman. You I did? forget who the woman was. Oh, Paul Newman's so wonderful. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we should start going into Pushkin because it could be a whole oh episode on Pushkin. But before we start, before we stop, do we, tell me, turn the Pushkin book around and let's, uh, let me hear a second on here. Since we're here, let's hear about, here's your other favorite. You've got two main favorites. If, if I was to say, who are my mom's favorite writers, it would be Pushkin and Dostoevsky. Is that not right? Or you'll Probably, say Chekhov. but I'm sure we're, oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I can't ever so, say. Uh, you'd have, Someone well, said, how, anyway, who no, do I Dostoevsky, go? Dostoevsky, yes, of course. Uh, I was standing in the synagogue one day, and at the other end of the hall, a Kafka, too? Oh, yeah. Uh, the other end of the hall was a, a young guy, you know, 14 or something, with a long black coat and a, hat who said you must read Dostoevsky it's very funny he said, you must read the brothers Karamazov so I did but I didn't get any of these ideas uh in school I mean to read the stuff it was always at the synagogue at oh. Kafka all these people because they talked about this stuff um but and anyway, what was his what was his uh motivation at that moment to tell you to read that well I didn't even the talk to him I just he said that and that was it <laughs> <laughs> he knew that. But I like the He knew that style. you were always carrying books. I, I like the style. He, yeah. Anyway, of course, uh, this book is kind of hard to find because Dostoevsky gave a speech about Pushkin, and uh, you know, he was a great lover of Pushkin, and and uh, at the time that he gave the speech, well. He was one of the few that really talked or knew about Pushkin. So, he is, uh, this is very good to read, and of course there he is, <laughs> Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. But to really get him, it's helpful to be able to read Russian. And was Pushkin the one that was also a doctor? One of these no, writers no. was a doctor as well, or something. Mm. Who was that? Some mm. of these people. Well, yeah, Chekhov. Chekhov was. Uh, What's that story? Because I was surprised. Well, his father was a slave, otherwise known as a serf. His father was a, his, and his, was his father or his grandfather? Well, anyway, they, the family was bought out of slavery. And so um, Chekhov had, uh, went to uh, medical school, and he paid his way by writing stories. Funny ones, short ones that were in a, mag, a magazine, a popular magazine. And that's how he got his money that way. But then, uh, so, but he never gave up being, uh, he said uh, medicine was his wife, but literature was his mistress. <laughs> so, so he did both. And when there was a famine or you know, when there was a cholera epidemic or something, he would be in charge of whole districts. Wow, geez. And then he went to South Island Island, which is where prisoners are kept in freezing conditions and did a report on that, which oh. he didn't have to do. So his basic... Uh, Humanity. Well, the, his tuberculosis, you know, these things did not help his... He had TB? Oh, that's what he died of. And he died young, young, didn't he? Young. Wasn't he like 42? If that, I can't remember. It's really sad that so many of these people did so many amazing things and they died in before they were 45 years old. Yeah. And yeah, here's well, a, here's an actor. Pushkin that, was thirty eight. Oh, Pushkin was thirty eight. Oh, now that, that bad light in that, but look at Gerard Philippe, and he was only like thirty two when he died. Oh no, he must have been older because I was thirty two and he's older than me. Oh. But he was in his early forties, and uh, he had just. Beautiful. It was just awful because he came to New York with his company, 
and uh, I couldn't go because I had two little babies. Oh, I'm sorry I was born. Yes. <laughs> this is the picture Mom gave me I, that I love the most. I love my kitty. Diagola, from... of course, you know, is a Russian. Diagola. I got a lot of reflection in here, but that's okay. Look at that cat. Mm. I love cats. Yes. Yeah. Puss in Boots. Yes, that's Puss in Boots. I always like that story. Okay, and it's one now. thing, I'll just say that, you know, this Hopper, Hopper's oh, places, like I Hopper. love Hopper. I love Hopper. Well, we'll get into more of these later. Oh, Thank you, Mom. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Who's that? Caron de Beaumarchais wrote uh, four plays, but the two most famous ones are The Marriage of Figaro and uh, The Barber of Seville, which uh, Mozart got permission to make into a, opera, an opera, The Marriage of Figaro. Ro years later, Rossini uh, made... Uh, the Barber of Seville, but he wrote The Barber of Seville first. But he was, what a guy. His father was a watchmaker, but he became a watchmaker to the king because he invented some device, or I forget what it is, but so he did all, he did that and he was an adventurer and he, he raised more money for the American Revolution than any other French he, man. Um, he, Louis the Fifteenth, meanwhile, sent him secretly. This is just an example to London to stop a blackmailer from publishing scandal about the royal mistress, Madame du Barry. The next king, Louis the Sixteenth, gave him two similar cloak and da dagger missions. So this guy was all over the place, and uh, but <laughs> he just did so many things, and it's just amazing um, if you read. And I'm reading them now because. I'm going to see this Figaro thing over at the Berkeley Rep. But uh, these uh, these plays are are just wonderful, and they're funny, and it's just great. And he makes fun of the what aristocracy. What year was he writing again? Oy vey. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, when was the American Revolution? 1776? Oh, oh okay, yeah. That okay. date I should know. Yeah. Jeez Louise. We're supposed to know that. And then the <laughs> uh, French Revolution was like a few years later, right? Oh, I don't remember. July 5th. Somebody in this stack wrote a lot about the French Revolution. I don't know. But uh, this guy... I had guy, the Les Mis guy. You have, I want you to tell me about... Because I bought Les Mis and it was too hard for me to read it. And it's in this stack somewhere. And someday before I die, I want to read, read it. it. Yeah. But, um, Victor Hugo. Yeah, Victor Hugo. Tell us... Tell, say that thing about Victor Hugo and what he wrote about there being no more executions. It, remember that? Oh, yeah. That's somewhere in here. Well, you remember? Tell me. Well, he was he he was against the death penalty. I don't. I can't. I can't just. Well, I just remember on. that he said that in the future, when we're more sane or we're yeah. more, we'll have what civilized yeah. or something. We won't have the death penalty. Yeah. And you've got a Jewish encyclopedia. Yeah, somebody gave me that. I think maybe my son gave me that. I've never opened it. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll we'll spend some more time later. Anything that's catching your eye before I go? No. What's that? What is it? I don't know. Okay. Don't... We will spend more time with these lovely treasures. What is this? Look at the beautiful cover on that book. What is that? Which? Is that just? Is that just a leather cover? Oh no, that's nothing? yeah. That you can put a book in there and protect it somehow. That's what you know? Yeah. This is uh, the cover for the Mark Twain book. Oh, that's all messed up. That you're reading in the kitchen. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Eve's diary. You were telling me about Eve's Oh, that, yeah, that's a very funny book by Mark Twain. <laughs> he also wrote Adam's Diary, too. And whose who's diary is, was better? The woman's. Well, I think, uh, <laughs> I, I never read Adam's, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you see, she thinks that he is a reptile because he doesn't have any hips. <laughs> As she notices him, and he doesn't want to talk. Oh, yeah, do the... <clears throat> We uh, need the beginning one. There was one you just read. I think the beginning one to me once one night. And it was so pretty. I am I am almost a whole day old now. Yeah. I arrived yesterday. That is as it seems to me, and it must be so. For if there was a day before yesterday, I was not there when it happened, or I should remember it. It could be, of course, that it did happen and that I was not noticing very well. I'll be very watchful now, and if any day before yesterday's happened, I will make a note of it. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I feel like an experiment. I feel exactly like an experiment. It would be impossible for a person to feel more like an experiment than I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, where's the one where the guy won't talk? 
That's funny. Yeah, I'll get to that. Oh. Stars are good, too. I wish I could get some to put in my hair, but I suppose I never can. You'd be surprised to find out how far off they are, for they do not look it. When they first showed last night, I tried to knock some down with a pole, but it didn't reach, which <laughs> astonished me. <laughs> then I dried clods till I was all tired out, but I never got one. Oh, this poor lady. You have bookmarks on, in the back. I also uh, to Sometimes, I, maybe I was reading and I picked something. Too. Oh, yeah. I followed the, uh, oh, I followed the other experiment around yesterday afternoon at yeah. a distance to see what it might be for, if I could. <laughs> but I was not able to make out. I think it is a man. I'd never seen a man, but it looked like one, and I feel sure that that is what it is. I realize that I feel more curiosity about it than about any of the other reptiles. <laughs> if it is a reptile, and I suppose it is, for it has frowsy hair and blue eyes and looks like a reptile, it has no hips. It tapers like a carrot. When it stands, it spreads itself apart like a derrick. So I think it is a reptile, though it may be architecture. <laughs> I was afraid of it at first and started to run every time it turned around, for I thought it was going to chase me, but by and by, I found it was only trying to get away. So after that, I was not timid anymore, but tracked it along several hours, about 20 yards behind, which made it nervous and unhappy. At last, it was a good deal worried and climbed a tree. I waited a good while, then gave it up and went home. It is up there yet, resting apparently, but that is a subterfuge. Sunday isn't the day of rest. Saturday is appointed for that. It looks to me like a creature that is more interested in resting than in anything else. <laughs> it would tire me to rest so much. It tires me just to sit around and watch the tree. I do wonder what it is for. I never see it do anything. Oh, gee. <laughs> they returned the moon last night, and I was so happy. I think it is very honest of them. It slid down and fell off again. But I was not distressed. There's no need to worry when one has that kind of neighbors. They will fetch it back. I think my phone's going off. That might right. be the deliverer. I recently discovered Christopher Morley. And this book I, is so cool because it's about a Hoboken, a theater in Hoboken that opened in 1863 and was reopened by Christopher Morley and others in 1926. This book is 1929. I think 1926, 20, 27. But anyway, it's just lovely. It has, uh, you know, some of the cast. The actor most well known that was in the theater was Pat O'Brien. I recognize that name. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they did this theater and they call this the coast of Bohemia. There's a map of uh, Hoboken. There's a ferry to New York, Holland Tunnel, Chamber of Con whatever, oh, yeah. Continental Ho Hudson Street. It was on Hudson, the Rialto Theater. Oh, so this yeah. is just a lovely, fun book about. Oh, look at that. Let me see. Yeah. Cute. Well, that's, and so, and, the, and then, speaking of the theater, I recently bought this book because when the Circle and Square opened, I was in New York. And uh, that was like kind of the beginning of Off-Broadway in a way. There was a Provincetown Playhouse, but this was, you know, really cool. Tell me, tell me some of your theater stories of back then. Well, <laughs> I was in a play at the Amato Opera House. I forgot about that. I couldn't think of the name of it. But anyway, no, well. But you took classes with I, people? I that... studied with Herbert Berghoff at uh, his school. and. Uh, Wow, but yeah, I saw, oh, you can see, he's familiar, isn't he? Which one? Um, well, there's, oh, wait, I can't think of his name, Iceman Cometh, oh. he was in the Iceman Cometh, but a lot of these people, Redgrave, you know, so mm -hmm. anyway, this is an interesting book to me because I was around when that was going on, mm -hmm. ooh, creating a new American theater with Circle and Square. Wow. So, um, yeah, I like this. I won't go on and on about it, but it's interesting to me. It is. Anyway. We got Morley. Well, that's another book by Morley. These are essays. Oh, God, he's really good. Really good. Really good in the, in the illustration. But, I, you know. <laughs> that's it. The other great thing my mom's given to me and 
my siblings is the love for music and musicals. And Mama, you saw a bunch of musicals with the real people. You saw John Raitt? Yes. This is Carousel? Yes. <laughs> That's all you got to say. Well, I was pretty young at the time. It was wonderful. The first one I saw was Oklahoma with Alfred Dr